Okay. All right, this is Guild Wars 2. Okay. Oh, you guys has that one. All right, let's see the boss. Yeah, it's on me. It's Where's the boss? I must have missed mine, I guess. Okay, there it is. Hmm. It's yeah. not that bad. I mean, it, it, to, to be fair, it. it's not that bad. The numbers are really silly. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, this... I, I, I don't know, man, like... Pay-to-win game? Wait, is it actually a pay-to- Is Guild Wars Shackle a pay-to-win game? I didn't even fucking know that. Sir, sir? No? Well, then why is everybody saying that? I, I, well, it's hard for me to know, like, what's actually true and what's not. Because I, I haven't played any of these games. Like, I've pretty much only played WoW as, like, an MMO. Like, Black Desert is literally the only game that I've played besides WoW. Like, it's an MMO. So all of this is very different to me. You can't pay for anything? Um... Latest rate of Final Fantasy 14. Shackle. Should you play Guild Wars 2 in 2019? Should you play Guild Wars 2 in... That's a good one. There. Probably not. Let me just... Hello, everybody. Let's try and answer the question, should I play Guild Wars 2 in 2019? Yeah. My honest opinion is that you should play it, but let me try to explain my perspective. Pigs fly in WoW 2 if you pay $25. So I'm not really sure if that's the best way to describe it. On what I think influences this. Wait. First off, Guild Wars 2 has a free to play option which will allow you to play the core version of the game. This only has a handful of limited- oh, What does it say here? As stated in the video, I am an arena net partner. I'm assuming that's the people that make Guild Wars 2. However, I was not paid to make this video. I made this video to answer a question, not to fulfill a sponsorship. These opinions are mine and mine alone. Okay. Okay, l l let's talk some real. If you're going to have a video and you're a partner with these people, in acting in best interest, you would not make a video that would say negative things about them. Right? So I, I don't necessarily think that that's entirely, you know, convincing. I mean, you guys you see what I'm only saying? only have access to eight of the classes and won't be able to play Revenant. Yeah, it's you a conflict of interest. You have access to one map region, and that consists of Central Tyria. Okay. There are also some chat restrictions. If you want to see all of them, I will leave a link down below in the description. Oh, come you on. You bear in mind that this is basically an infinite trial. Free to play okay. allows you to play the game to level 80 and access the core classes. You right. can play through the full original story it's good that and access it's free to the play. content that was made available to players who first bought the game when it was originally released. If you buy the expansions Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, you will unlock two whole new regions, the Heart of Maguma and the Crystal Desert, and this will this come with like a wow. plethora of content to tackle. Here on the left, we have the Heart of Maguma maps, which have a good amount of events in them. And then here in the bottom right hand side of the map, we have the path People, of fire. People, thanks for I don't know if I want to watch an OSRS video. There are also events here, but arguably not as fun. One big selling point about these maps is that they appear to be the largest in the game, or they feel like it. The expansions come with two whole new storylines. Man, like really, like, who gives a fuck about this? Like, I mean, yeah, the 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 map is really big. OSRS. God, guys, why are people so into OSRS? I don't know what got my stream into it. It's crazy. Access to six raid wings. You gain gliding from Heart of Thorns and mounts from Path of Fire. Jesus Christ. The mounts in Guild Wars 2 are definitely one of their best features. They are not pointless. They have their own skills. Oh, what, what the fuck? You can fuck? also upgrade these skills via the mastery point system. That's badass. This is something that you will continue to unlock throughout the expansions. Okay, so you're the riding around on nine tails. also unlock the class Revenant. This is something you would not have access to in the free-to-play version. I mean, the combat looks okay. And finally, we have the Living World episodes. I will the build on this that? later on. 
but the living world is an ongoing series that just gets updated periodically. The way that I look at it, the game stops at level 80 until you buy the expansions. Okay. There is so much content in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire that you very easily run out of things to do in the core game. That said, ArenaNet do release regular content for free, and sometimes there is a decent wait in between. Okay. However, Guild Wars 2 does not charge a subscription service, and therefore I think it's viable for there to be a little bit of a wait in between each release. That said, there are some semi-regular balance updates, as well as a new raid wing approximately... All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about playing an MMO that's basically dead. Right? It's like, how many people do you think really play Guild Wars 2? Now, I, I, I want to go ahead and I want to kind of talk about something that's really big. Okay? And a lot of people might disagree with this, but I think that it's very true. The reason why people are so concerned about WoW dying is because they don't want to have their time invested in the game. They want to have as many people as possible see their accomplishments in the game. That's why people care about WoW like doing well or not doing well. Because the more people that play the game, those are, th those are all more people that can inspect them in the city and be like, wow, bro, that's awesome that you have this item. That's cool. Guild Wars 2 has millions of players. Well, yeah, I'm sure over the years it's probably had millions of players, but how many people are actively participating and playing the game on a regular basis? I would say that it's probably probably less than 100,000. Like, and, and this is just like a random guess of mine, but I would say probably less than 100,000. Okay, and uh, that's, oh, wrong. What is it, 150? Like, I mean, what I'm saying is there's a lot, there's not really that many people that are playing the game. And uh, yeah, about the same as Final Fantasy 14 Millions now? Do I have to look this up again? Like, are you fucking serious? How many people play... Fuck, I can't even type this. Uh, how many people... Fuck, people actively play Guild Wars 2? The game celebrated over 11 million players total last year and doesn't seem to be showing signs of, fly, uh, of flagging, okay? How many of us are how many of us are there? What are the actual numbers? How many active players are there? Is there any way for anyone to tell? Guild Wars 2 having between 1.5 to 3 million active users. There's no way. I don't believe it. There's no way. There, there, there's no way. Like. I, I, I just don't, I don't believe it. Because if you look at like every single, this might sound dumb, but the amount of people that are actively consuming content for a game, I think is indicative of how many people play the game. There are not a lot of people that are actively consuming Guild Wars 2 content. What? Am I wrong? Who watches YouTube? Well, you're watching it right now. Wait, two point no. That's no. Let me look at. Uh, let's look at the Guild Wars 2 Reddit. Okay. Like, uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'll I'll pull that up in a second. Uh, Guild Guild Wars 2 Reddit. How many people are actively on the Guild Wars 2 Reddit? 2,000 people. Wow, that's actually more than I thought. Holy shit. Okay, let's compare this to the uh, to the WoW Reddit. Okay, let's see. 6,000 people. Actually, that's surprising. I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised there's that many people on there. Hmm. One point five million people? Like I mean, but how does that how does that translate to have just like such low engagement? But I mean I, I just I that that's that's crazy to me. That there's so low engagement for these games while at the same time Check OSRS Reddit. 
Okay, let me look. Uh, OSRS Reddit. There's more on, on RuneScape. What? What? There's no way, dude. There's no, well, what? The? I just, bad logic? I mean, like, I, I, I feel like the amount of people that are actively engaged in a game on third-party websites is a relative indicator of how well the game is doing. Like, that's not, that's not bad logic. That's just common sense. I, I, uh, I, I, I um I understand that whenever I looked up Jesus Christ th this this post right here I don't even know what the fuck this is but this post right here has more upvotes than anything that's on the WoW subreddit a and look at Classic WoW w look at this and, and how many people in Classic WoW two thousand so Classic WoW what is Classic WoW as popular as Guild War oh my God. there's no no. That's different because Classic Wild's not out yet. But. I just like. <sighs> There's a website that tracks the amount of online players for RuneScape at any given time. What website is that? I want to see it. What website is it? Uh, uh, was it the official uh, official Reddit? The main page. OS, OS, RS. Okay, how many people are playing right now? Did I... How many people? Were, were, oh, oh, I see it right there. 97,000. That's not that many. Like, I mean, man, dude, like, I just, I, I mean, ultimately once a year. And of course, they're living world seasons. Included in this is some quality of life items and fashion item releases as well. Okay. These consist of mount skins, weapon skins, infinite salvage kits, extra bag slots, and then different types of particle effect infinite tools. Those That's will make cute. more sense once you've actually bought a good few amount of mining tools and so on and so forth. And the best part is that with gold to gem conversion, you don't have to... Somebody said a WoW private server is 10,000 right now. Regler, what private server has 10,000 active players right now at this exact moment? Because I, I don't know any of them that do. Wait, Warmane actually does? I don't believe that because doesn't Warmane sell gear? No, 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 no. Here, here, I'm about to, I'm about to drop a, I'm about to drop a big IQ. This is a big IQ. Get ready for it. They sell gear. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Listen to this. The more people, as I said, the larger the server is, the higher the perceived value of getting a really badass item is because you get to show it to more people. So imagine having a private server and there's only one person playing on it or 50 people playing on it, that gear is going to be, uh, I, I guess, like comparatively less valuable than if you're playing on a server that has 10,000 people on it. So in Warmain's example, it's actually in their best interest to say that they have more people playing on that server because it artificially increases the perceived value of them selling the gear to the players. They. 
Joe's still playing? No. No, I don't believe it. Here, here, here's a, here's a, here's a, here, here's a, here's a, here's a thing. Whenever coincidence and personal gain converge, it's never a coincidence. Spend another penny on this game after you buy it. You can if you wish, but arguably you can get everything you want just by playing the game. Okay. ArenaNet's prime target market is the gamer who does not want to be left behind and feel that they need to grind for weeks just to achieve their goals. Oh, that, that, that you seems are able familiar. You reach level 80 by playing any game mode you wish, with the exception to some free-to-play limitations. Okay. If you wish to do the standard method and just grind out heart completion, go for it. However, if you're a player versus player... Man, am I going to have to level up a heart in another game? Like I just hit, I just hit Azerite level fifty. Like I don't think that I can handle another one. Like I, I mean, really, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Fanatic, you are able to go in at level two and just start playing through your reward tracks. Lights up as five thousand. These tracks That's a lot. take your PvP experience and reward you with items periodically. Okay. You will occasionally be granted a tome of knowledge, which is equal to one level gain. Upon usage of this item, you will gain one character level. PvP in Guild Wars 2 is played in one... Rare candy. I mean, two game modes. These consist of Conquest and Stronghold. Bro, like, let's get to some fucking, like... World. In Conquest, All right, we're gonna you just skip to node yeah. ownership and play 5 versus 5. Okay. Essentially, capture point deathmatch. So and it's a Rathy Basin. Where you use supply to request NPCs who break down walls and eventually kill the main NPC. Let's see. Yeah, wall. I want to see what this is. How is it so far? Stronghold is do a rework and it's yeah. Not I, I want to. Really I'm going to go to how PvP is it so far. Just going to skip ahead. How a bit. is it so far for you? If you are an ex World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV okay, or go. whatever player, you may be used to the item level grind and constant desire to be relevant by farming random drops, which may never come. <laughs> Man, shut the fuck up. Everything's this fine. is something you love and need in your MMO of choice. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 will not offer you that. Guild Wars okay. 2 will always be played at your own pace. If you want to leave and come back when the Living World episodes release, go for it. Some people play every single day, others don't. They make their own content. They form communities and play the game the way they want to. The limitations of the- God, dude, like just the way that they fucking- Oh, you play the game you want to play, like, I, 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 it, it, it's so fucking casual, man. Like, no, you don't play the game the way that you want to play. You fucking log on, and there's a list of things that you got to do. You got to get to level 60. You got to get your fucking gear. You got to get your fire resist. You got to get your attunement. You got to get into Molten Core. You got to kill Ragnaros. You got to kill fucking BWL. You got to kill Nefarian. You got to go into AQ40. You got to go into Marodon and farm the gear for AQ40. And you got to go one, two, three, four, five. And you have to fucking farm that shit out. And if you don't want to do it, if you don't want to level, if you don't want to do it the right way, oh, I just want to PvP? Fine. Enjoy being level 10 for your whole fucking life. Because that's all you're ever going to be. And I, I, it's, there's no structure to the game. Like, then how do you determine who's good and who's bad if there's no structure to the game? Like, I mean, that's the best part about games that have a lot of structure is that you know who's fucking better than you and who you're better than. You know where you stand on the totem pole, in the feeding chain, in the food, in the food pyramid. Raids in this game is that there is only a single tier of difficulty. That Story, said, yeah, there are objects called challenge modes, which increase the difficulty of some encounters, not all of them. These okay. add additional health and additional mechanics. All right, let's Raid see it. Do it. Drop exclusive skins and achievements that can provide you with exclusive items. Do it. That said, due to the lack of gear treadmill, all of the previous raid wings are still as relevant as the most recent. This means that none of the bosses actually become outdated. They remain equally as difficult as they were the first time that you did them. And the only thing that improves that is your experience with the bosses. As previously mentioned, there are currently six raid wings with another one in development, hopefully coming in 2019. So that means currently there are 22 encounters with 16 bosses. I, I don't know. I mean, no class rolls, no gear progression, no end game. Like this seems like, this just seems so like massively open-ended that I don't feel like I could I could really think that I was better than somebody in this game. I mean, this is like, and, and if I can't do that, what's the point? 
massively casual? Well, it, it is. It does seem like it is massively casual. And and I don't want, I, I, I want to play a game where I can invest all day into the game and I will be better than somebody that doesn't. Now, I think that there's a limit to that. I don't like the infinitely scaling Azerite power and the artifact power, but I, I want to be better than somebody because I put more time into the game. And I think skill and time invested should play maybe not equal parts, but they should both play a part in like my character's power. The encounters count as actual raid engagements, but they are not bosses in themselves. Okay. This includes things like escorting an NPC from one side to another whilst defending it. Each boss can drop ascended weapons and gear, and it's a pretty good method of making gold as well. Now let's quickly recap on the living world. The Living World story is Stupid a regular release schedule pet. of ArenaNet, where they provide the player base with a story which is separate to the storylines contained in the core game, as well as Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. No, I, I don't you care will, about however, this. You however, need the expansions to play the story. I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't care about the story. one at a time and typically arrive with a new map, new skins, and new achievements. This is... In a recent case, they included a new mount with one of the episodes. You can find Ascended gear in these episodes, whilst also enjoying an ongoing lore saga that may or may not hold your attention. And lastly, there are replayable dungeons in Guild Wars 2 known as Fractals. They range from level 1 to 100 and require a special resistance in order to progress. Each level increases in difficulty. Okay. This special resistance is known as Agony. Agony can be socketed into your Ascended gear, and the best bit is you can even do some of these in Challenge mode. And these okay. really are hard. There are also things called mislock instabilities. These are essentially affixes that will attempt to make the fact. I want to say something. I actually don't like infinitely scaling content. I think that you should be able to like it. And, and I think Path of Exile, outside of Delve, does this really well. If you see some dude whose dick is actually the same length as my forearm here. And he goes up to the chamber of the Minotaur and he just fucking goes like this. And he's dead? Oh, wow. That's fucking awesome. That's amazing. And a shaper, yeah, shapers per second DPS, exactly. That's what I want to see. And, and like the infinitely scaling stuff, I, I, I've just, it's like kind of, it's not really that cool. I want to be able to get to a point into the game, I want to be able to break the game. Like, you literally just break the game. Like, whenever I play an ARPG, my goal is to walk around while casting nothing and still clear the raid. Or still clear the map or the dungeon or the rift or whatever. I want to be able to put in the least effort possible and get the biggest results imaginable. And you can't do that in infinitely scaling stuff. Like, I, I'm just not a fan. They're not infinite. Oh, they're not. Okay. They only go up to 100, the that's what said. These are on a rotation, and more of them apply to your dungeons as you progress through the higher but the tiers. Gear, but the gear is going to be the, the same, level, though, right? There can only be three at once. And as always, here is a list of that on the wiki. Oh, the affixes, okay. I should note that these are not going to be available to you until you hit level 80. Okay. Fractals can reward you with exclusive golden fractal Damn, weapon you've got to be fast for this. And also with ascended gear via red drops. This is cool. Many players farm these on a regular and daily well, basis. This is badass. Then again, you might say, well, wow. my friend has been playing this for a while and I'm going to be way behind where they it's are. Sped up, oh. But Guild Wars 2 have already thought of that. As a maximum level, you can go out of your way to the low level areas and you can scale to their content. Yeah. This means that your friends can come and play with you as a brand new player and they will gain something from it as well. There is also a benefit in the sense that you do hit a lot harder than these new characters, so you can farm those this like having very, very quickly and efficiently. It that also gives you a reason to go back and farm some achievements. So at this point, I think I've covered all the bases. Okay. I've covered free to play, paid versions of the game, the combat system, PVP, World v World, Fractals, and ah, man. I think that I've presented you with enough information to enable you to formulate an answer. I want to go ahead and I want to I want to respond to something that somebody said in chat because I think that that that's the way that I feel too. There's zero vertical progression. I, I if all of the raid bosses drop the same tier of gear 
that means that you're basically doing like imagine doing wow uh, check world versus world we'll look at that in a minute okay let me let me respond to this um that's exactly what guild wars 2 if I, it's like imagine if Nax, Molten Core, BWL, and AQ40 all dropped basically the same gear. Like, Classic would suck. Like, let's be real, it would just suck. I mean, like, if you're going to play max level, it would just suck. So, I, I really don't think, like, that's good. Like, not having vertical progression seems like it's really kind of, it makes the whole thing meaningless to me. Ultimately, if you are somebody who can relax and not demand content every week and create your own content with friends and do regular daily completions, you may be happy in Guild Wars 2. May. I personally play PvP every single day on stream for about five to eight hours. And to me, it's enjoyable working to improve wow. and get closer to the top rankings. For others, it's about speed clearing raid bosses or winning some of the player made raid tournaments. Some people collect all the skins and some just want to have all the gold that they possibly could. To date, okay. I've put in 3,400 hours in two years, and there are some that have put in over 12,000 in the last six. That's a good start. The game will be what you make of it. However, I genuinely do believe that you should buy the expansions. If you wait for a sale, perfect. That's fine by me. Yeah, but I don't the think they have definitely battles. worth your while. Now, here's my chance to sell out a little bit. I do have links in the description you could use to both try the game and buy the game if you like. Oh, he has a Simply referral because code. I am an ArenaNet partner. I wanted to make this video because people kept asking the question on Reddit, and I just wanted to answer the question in a video format. Okay. If you dude. guys do have any further questions, find me on my Twitch stream. Okay. Thank dude. you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. 